Good evening, Emmanuel family. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right. So um, I think we need to get on our feet, and uh, we're going to sing Blessed Be Your Name. That's how we're going to start tonight. As soon as we get the blessed girl. There we go. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name. Thank you. 
thanks for singing along, even though the words that were up there were not what we were singing. <laughs> it was a different blessed be the name. You may be seated. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, good evening, family. Did you know that song, sort of? So you could at least sing along, at least on the refrain. Good. So we'll get that fixed before we sing that song again. But uh, there are a lot of announcements on your announcement sheet. Love to have you take a copy of this home. You can also use it as your prayer sheet. You can pray for your church, for our ministries, for those who are in need. Uh, all of that is listed on your on your announcement sheet. So I'm just going to commend that to you and uh, invite you to look that over, to kind of look it over in a prayerful way and ask God to kind of point you in um, into directions that you can be part of our ministry and make a difference in the world. So if we can get the blue microphone brought up, um, we'll have our opening prayer. Thank you, Melvin. Tonight, our scripture is, I think you need to bring me down just a little bit, Daryl, if you would. Um, tonight, our scripture is Genesis chapter 12, so we'll be list, uh, hearing the story about Abraham, actually, whose name is Abram at this point in the story. Now, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. So that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had, had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acqu uh, acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oaks of Morah, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of, Beth of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on his west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And a little uh, reading from the New Testament, we have Hebrews chapter 2. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself, that is Jesus, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death, he might destroy the one who has the power of, of death, that is the devil, and free those who, are all, who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come, Jesus did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be merciful and faithful, a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are introduced uh, in today's reading to, uh, the, to the Father of the Faith. 
that is, the faiths of Ju Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. His name is uh, Abram. And in the closing verses of chapter 11 of Genesis, we are introduced to the uh, genealogical family of Abram and his immediate family. Abram, we're told, has two brothers. They are Nahor and Haran. Haran has died, um, and he had a son, Lot. That is Abram's nephew. Abram is married to Sarai, and Terah, Abram's father, took Abram, Sarai, and Lot to the land of Canaan. And they settled in the area known as Haran. Interesting that it's the same name as his deceased brother. And there we're told that Terah, Abram's father, died. Now they landed in this place uh, more than likely because there was an oasis there, a well there, a life-giving spring that, that drew shepherds, that drew people from all uh, the area uh, because of that life-giving water. And so, uh, again, just thinking about that idea of the oasis, I, I pray that um, the word of God, the music, uh, the prayers that we offer are an oasis to you, a life-giving spring to you this week. It's at this well, more than likely, that generations later, Jacob meets Rachel, the daughter of Laban. And uh, that story of Jacob and Leah and Rachel unfolds. So I give you this background to suggest that there is a lot going on in this text. There's a lot going on in Ab Abram and Sarah's life. And I wonder, do you ever feel like there's a lot going on in your life? Do you feel like you need the spring of the water of life? Do you need that, that water of life that gushes up from God, the water of eternal life? I suspect that you do. I suspect that each of us sense that <clears throat> that drought in our own hearts. We sense that need for that life-giving spring. So with a lot going on in Ab Abram and Sarai's life, uh, there are many directions that I could go as a preacher. But I'd like to focus uh, on this one fact, that in this text, Abram becomes... He becomes a substitute father for Lot, his nephew. And while he is doing that, as his own father dies, God, God becomes a substitute father for Abram. God says to Abram, go. Go from uh, your country, go from your kindred, go from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And as God says, go. God promises Abraham, Abram that he will give him a place, that he will give him a people, and that he will give him a purpose for his life. And I'll say more about that in a little bit. But in our world, we know about substitute fathers, don't we? We know about blended families. And sometimes those families, are, are, are they just work, uh, and, and they're great. They're a blessing to all involved. We know that other times blended families... Well, they can just be a disaster. In Abram and Sarai's case, there is some of both. There is some goodness and blessing, and there is hardship and struggle. But for some levity, uh, I want to I want to play this uh, video. It's just a two minute video about from Leave It to Beaver uh, about a substitute father. And to set the scene, um, Ward, the father, is on business. He's in St. Louis on business. And before he goes, he says to his eldest son, Wally, he takes him aside and he says, Wally, while I'm gone, I need you to be the man of the house. I need you to take care of your mother and your, your little brother and just take care of things while I'm gone. Well, the next day at school, uh, Beaver gets tripped in the hall. And uh, about that time, he, he stands up and, and he's going to tell this kid off and he just when he calls him this nasty name, which we never figure out really what he calls him, his teacher steps into the doorway. So she calls Beaver into the, into the classroom, and she says, uh, she writes a note. She says, you need to take this note home to your parents, and you need to bring one of them back 
here so that we can have a conversation about this serious situation. Well, Beaver just can't, he just can't face his mother. He can't let her know the words that has come, have come out of his mouth. So he institutes a plan to make his brother Wally his substitute father. So let's see how that works. So as a substitute father, uh, Wally did, uh, he did pretty good there, didn't he? It's, uh, it's one of the times in, in the schemes that Beaver comes up with that it actually worked out. Um, to help, uh, so Wally, but in, in the process, Wally makes promises, doesn't he? He makes promises to Miss Landers and he makes promises uh, to Beaver promises to help Beaver see the error of his ways, promises to impress, impress upon him the need for good behavior, not only for his sake, but for the sake of the family and the family name. And as a substitute father, God also makes promises. God makes promises to Abram and Sarah. He says, I will give you a place, a land that you can call home. He says, I will give you a people. I'll give you a new identity. And he says, I'll give you a purpose, a purpose for your life. You will become a blessing to all nations of the world. Throughout their story in walking with God, their substitute father, they had their successes and their failures. They had their ups and their downs. Sometimes they trusted God. And sometimes they took matters into their own hands. I'm sure you remember the story when the promise of the descendants wasn't coming true. So Sarai gave her, um, her maidservant, uh, Hagar, to, to Abram, and they bore the son Ishmael, one of whom God says, this will not be your heir. Abram and Sarai were not perfect. They doubted. They stumbled. They, but they made their way, they did their best, and they looked to follow God. But here's the thing, through it all, God was faithful. God was steadfast. God was trustworthy. And here is what I want to stress this evening as you stop at this oasis for refreshment. First of all, you can trust God. You can trust God to be, fa uh, to be faithful to be faithful to you in your journey, to be faithful, to be your father, to guide you. And, and if you struggle with that image of father, to be your parent, your loving parent, the one who knows you fully, who, who sees you and, and loves you, who, who, has, who has claimed you and, and uh, wrapped you in the love of his grace. And secondly, the other thing I want to stress tonight is it only takes one person one person trusting God, one person following God, one person listening to God, our substitute, oh, or is this when we must recognize that God is our true father, our true parent? It only takes one trusting our true parent to redirect a family from the things of the flesh to the things of God. My mom recently reminded me of my own family tree. Hold on a minute, just a minute. Oh. My mom recently reminded me of my own family tree. Her father, my grandfather, before she was eight years old, was a drinker. He was mean and he was hurtful. When she was eight years old around that time in her life and I don't know the details of how this happened but he came to Christ he came to Christ and he heard God's voice and he surrendered his life he quit drinking he became more humane and compassionate and years later as a grandfather I knew him as a gentle and a humble man a man who read his Bible every morning at the breakfast table and my, my life was blessed. My life was influenced. It was changed because he was willing to hear the voice of God. The blessing of God through Abram and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, is upon you, my friends. And Jesus is the fruit 
He is the fruit of their faithfulness, of their trust. In Jesus, the one faithful to God, is the one who died for you. He uh, has given you a place. He has given you a home within the family of God. He has given you a people and a new identity in the, fa- in the house of God. And he has given your life purpose, a life of meaning, a life that is meant to be a blessing to others. And when you hear, when you follow, when you listen, it will change your life. And when it changes your life, it may change your marriage. It may change your family relations. It may change how you live in the world. It may change your outlook towards others in the world around you. And it will definitely increase your love, your mercy, your grace, as it flows from you to others. Will you trust God this night with your life? Will you be one who listens, who hears, who follows? Amen. We've got some excited kids to come in, so I think the band's going to play a little music while they come on in. That's all right. Come on in. Put the light on. Come on in. You want to just shut this? You want to just shut that when you can? Excuse me. Is she all right? Can I get the microphone? Take the microphone. Thank you. Thanks for the prayer. Just make sure you hold it up. We're going to do the creed.
Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through the mouth. And parents, if you're sitting with your kids tonight, just breathe upon them, maybe not literally, but just breathe upon them now the blessing that you as a parent can give them. They are the reason that one of the reasons that God calls us to hear his voice as our parent so that we can parent our children and teach them the faith and the love of God. We don't do this a lot in worship on Wednesday night, but I thought just with um, this text with Abraham and um, Sarah and uh, their, their trust, their willingness to follow God, that it would be good for us to speak the words of the of faith, the words of the church throughout the years, the Apostles' Creed. And, you know, you might even come to this moment and say, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to believe. But hopefully through the confession of the church, your strength, your, your faith will be strengthened as well. So let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will judge, judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll have some prayers now. Let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. Can we get the blue microphone again? I think it might be muted. Shut itself off, maybe. There we go. Test, test, there we go. I think it works. Blue mic. Let me get the green mic. We know God can hear you, but we, you know, <laughs> these are prayers of the people. So, Green mic, there we go. Most high and holy God, pour out upon us your one and unified spirit, and awaken in every confession of the whole church a holy hunger and thirst for unity in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. O oh God, the source of all goodness, we give you thanks for the gift of reason and the opportunity for education. Bless our schools that they may be places of learning and safety, where teachers challenge the minds and nurture the hearts of students. Grant that teachers and students may work together in mutual respect and find joy in the challenges of academic life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, And gracious God, we pray for those who are in need tonight. We pray for those whose needs that only you know, that are hidden from us. We ask you to be with couples in marriage, with families in their home, with those who are struggling with aging parents, those struggling with children like beaver who may not be towing the line. We pray for those that we know need our prayers, who have requested those prayers, Ruby Sue, Gisley, Doc Bartleson, Liam, Hayden, Pastor Michelle, Jill, Lisa, Ashley, Betty, Jenny, Missionary Karen, and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in the Magianas. We lift these and all to you, O Lord, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Amen. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we ask that you would provide through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Now as we get ready to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, I want you to find somebody next to you and grab their hand. Can you? I even want you kids to do this. Can you kids grab a hand? Can you grab somebody's hand? Let's pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Grab somebody's hand. Can you do that? Will you hold my hand? Thanks. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. All right. Our sending song today is My Lighthouse again. This is a song we've been doing in September. We'll see what next week brings, but come on up, kids. Grab an instrument. Let's sing My Lighthouse. Nice job, kids. Nice job. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God is good.
all the time. Have a great night, everybody.